This is Frankie Lynch, Saturn Girl. Please, please, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and please comment below. It really helps out with the algorithm. But I wanted to talk a little bit about some other transits that are happening. I already made a video about Mars going into Leo, but tomorrow we're going to have a perfection between Mars and an opposition to Pluto. In fact, it's a whole Pluto mess. Pluto is going to be square Jupiter, trine the sun, and opposite Mars, which means that Jupiter will be square Mars and the sun will be sextile Mars. <clears throat> So anyway, this is sort of a big mashup. What can we expect from all these sorts of guys coming in and flailing around? Well, number one, my birthday is May 22nd. So please remember and please send me some fun birthday wishes if it occurs to you on some of my social media platforms or on here. It would be very much appreciated. So, but anyway, <clears throat> excuse me. But my birthday is very important and it is a momentous event because it inaugurates Gemini season. I'm one degree Gemini. I know the sun goes into Gemini tomorrow and my birthday is on Monday the 22nd. But which is more important? Obviously. Obviously. Well, what are some of the other interesting little transits we've got going on? Like I said, number one, we've got Pluto here making a square to, to Jupiter and a trine to the sun and then an opposition to Mars. Mars just moved into Leo. The sun is just moving into Gemini. And we know that Jupiter moved in to, um, to Taurus earlier in the month. So, <clears throat> excuse me, this is a lot of interesting energy to have sort of coming in around at the same time. We're going to talk a little bit about what, what each of these transits mean, what they tend to bring, and what they may mean for you. We're going to look at some past occurrences, of course, which, you know, they're not one-to-one -one comparisons. Because all these things are sort of, you know, coalescing and everything else. I just gleaked. <laughs> oh, gosh. Anyway, so like I said, May 21st. We have all these guys. And then May 23rd, Mars and Leo makes that square to Jupiter in Taurus. And then May 28th, the Sun in Gemini makes a square to Saturn in Pisces. Do, 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 do. So that'll be in a few days. But let's start off here at the beginning, shall we? So tomorrow, the big deal. The focal point of why we're doing this fucking video in the first place. Mars opposite Pluto. Pluto trying the sun. Okay, all this sort of thing. It's almost like they're going to make a right triangle here. See, look, we got this and we got the sextile. And then we have the trine. Right? <clears throat> Which is interesting because you think of a trine, the angle is 120 degrees. Right. And then you have a sextile, which is 60 degrees. And so what's. Um, um, I'm so sorry, I just lost my train of thought. We have. Um, uh, I'm sorry, a 60 degree angle and a 30 degree angle that equals 90. It's a 90 degree angle. It's a right angle. So it's a right triangle. I'm so sorry. My brain was just like. <sighs> but anyway, so that's sort of an important thing. So Mars, what's Mars for us? Mars is aggression, ferocity, conflict. He's injuries, right? He's also hot and dry, which means, as we've said before, he's independent and rebels against control. But what's Pluto? Pluto's our power. He's death wealth, obsession. He's hoarding, right? He's like the dragon hoarding gold. He's control, trauma. I think of, you know, underground things like precious metals and oil. So, you know, an opposition to and 
planets are opposed to each other. That's the hardest aspect. Oppositions are in the nature of Saturn. They represent two opposing forces and struggle with each other for supremacy. You know, when I think of this, and we think of opposing forces struggling for dominance, and what a good symbol or metaphor I think of here is, is sort of like the president struggling with one of their generals, right, over a decision. Or a general or a commanding officer struggling with a, a, a soldier that vehemently disagrees with them or disobeying a direct order, right? Disobeying a direct order from a superior officer is a big deal. I grew up in a military family and I know my dad told me I was never, I never served, but I was an army brat, you know? So anyway, um, some key words or phrases I think about with this are violent conflict, being pushed into a corner, the dam bursting, right? Violent releases of pressure. Things built up and then we explode. Well, I'll talk about just a couple past occurrences with this one. Um, I divided this up into four main categories. I was thinking war, weather, waking up, and wealth and business. The last occurrences I was going to look at here um, were around June 5th of 2021. So 2021, there was the Kebi massacre in Nigeria, June 3rd. Basically, bandits on motorcycles attacked eight villages in, in an area called Kebi, I believe is in northwestern Nigeria. 88 people were unalived. It was a terrible, terrible um, event. So very Mars-Pluto, right? This is a bigger chapter in a or a smaller chapter in a bigger conflict that is very Mars-Pluto. One side trying to dominate the other. In terms of weather, the 2021 um, Pacific typhoon season was especially bad. There was a, a tropical storm called Choi Wan or Dante hit the Philippines, unaliving at least three people and hundreds more displaced. In terms of what I would call waking up or power struggles between a dominant power and people protesting that dominance. June 4th, Israel-Palestine protests were erupting around the world. Pro-Palestinian uh, protesters gathered in a port in Oakland trying to block an Israeli cargo ship from coming into port in protest. They were also calling for an economic boycott, right? Now, protesting the treatment of the Palestinians, which, you know, we're not going to get political here, but it's pretty horrendous. So in terms of wealth and business, this is very Plutonian. Ransomware attacks. So in fact, there were several. I, I found three or four ransomware attacks under this transit, but we're picking two here. An American food processes, processing company, JNB USA. They were hit with a massive ransomware attack that shut down its operations, not only in North America, but also in Australia. The White House claimed it was a Russian attack. We don't know, but that's what they claimed. Then there was the Steamship Authority, which is a ferry that goes between mainland Massachusetts and a little island called, called Martha's Vineyard, where all the rich people live. So... The ferry goes back and forth, and it was also hit with ransomware. So another interesting thing. I, I was about to say funny, but it's not necessarily funny for the people involved. <clears throat> but very interesting. So what does this in particular mean for you? Now, in general, right, this whole transit, we've got Jupiter exacerbating with Mars. We've got the sun who's also hot and dry. Remember, Mars is hot and dry. The sun is hot and dry. Jupiter's hot and wet, but he'll definitely amplify the heat of the sun and Mars, <clears throat> right? So with this, we have to watch out for things like wildfires, you know, excessive heat, heat waves, all that sort of thing. So be careful, okay? Be very careful. This also is a high tension time, not just because of Mars opposite Pluto, but also, you know, the sun aspecting Pluto. Jupiter aspecting Mars, and the Sun aspecting Mars as well. Um, aggression is high. 
a tendency and a need to assert one's own interests and agenda is also high. So the risk of conflicts, physical altercations, and accidents will be elevated here. So please be careful. Pick your battles. Don't exacerbate situations that, you know, could go bad just because you have a quick hair up your butt. Well, also we have the sun in Gemini, right? Trine, Pluto, and Aqua. Pluto, Aquarius. So this is Gemini Lilum. Look at what house this is for you because it'll often tell you what the quality of Gemini season is for you. For me, it's my fifth house. So this tends to be fun. It tends to be when I tend to, you know, meet sexual partners and things like that. Um, usually the spring and summer are the fun times for me, you know. It's because I have Sun in Gemini in my fifth house. It's because I have Venus in Cancer in my sixth house. And it's because Leo is my is my seventh house. So Leo season is, you know, the exciting season for me. Well, <clears throat> This is definitely an interesting combination because um, the underlying tension um, is being exacerbated here. You know, the authority of the sun and the control is being uplifted by Pluto's darkness in a way. And the sun in turn is sort of shining a light on Pluto. We've talked about, you know, the sun is authority and justice and control and we did mention about Pluto, where Pluto's the hidden things and also control, <laughs> you know, wealth, power, rule, all that sort of stuff. So now we can think about, um, we can think about our trines here, our trines in their nature of Jupiter. These are harmonious aspects. But even with Pluto, harmonious aspects can be difficult, okay? So what are some keywords and phrases that I thought about with this one? Well, displays of power, of wealth or grandeur, glorifying authoritarianism, which is happening quite a bit these days, <clears throat> oppressive rulers, tyrants, desires for control or supremacy, and hoarding or consolidating wealth and power, also exposing Abuse and exploitation. Some past experiences of this, well, you know, displays of power. This, this is from May 2022. So May 19th of last year. This was the last time Sun was trying Pluto. So this is when Finland and Sweden both wanted to join NATO. They both announced that they were going to join following the Russian invasion of Ukraine. This was a very provocative thing to do because it's sort of a red line for Russia. So this was in a way, a display of NATO power that like, hey, we can flaunt this in your face, but it's not a good idea. It's not a good idea for global politics. Um, also, there was a nationwide baby formula shortage that happened. So in a very Plutonian show of force, Biden invo invoked the Defense Production Act, which forced um, different suppliers of commodities to fulfill orders for the baby manufacturer, the baby formula manufacturers first, so that they could produce the stuff. So very Plutonian thing, but it's important to remember that this is um, a very precedented thing in history. During World War II, FDR made manufacturers produce things necessary for the war effort and for social utility. Well, what else did we have going on? Ooh. The world's most expensive car was sold. It was a 1955 Mercedes-Benz Mercedes SLR Coupe for $142 million. How plutonium is that? Someone was hoarding their wealth in a single car, you know? Like, oh my gosh. Ooh. You know, <clears throat> excuse me. Pluto does try and control things, especially women's reproductive rights. So Oklahoma passed a bill last year banning nearly all abortions. It was the most restrictive abortion bill on the books. So talk about control and authoritarianism. You know, I mean, that's brutal. Then my birthday of last year, May 22nd, a report was released on abuse, a certain type of abuse, S-abuse, S-A, 
in the U.S. Southern Baptist Convention, the country's largest Protestant denomination. They were suppressing 20 years of abuse allegations and scandals, hurting children. These are the real groomers, I'm sorry. These people were really hurting children. That's just disgusting. And you know, the sun was shining a light on this Plutonian evil. The sun was exposing this Plutonian abuse. So just terrible, terrible, terrible. What's interesting too, is that um, the United States is a Sagittarius rising chart, which means Aries is the, is the fifth house and Mars is the ruler. So it's, it's very interesting, Mars being the ruler of children for the United States. And all this violence and stuff that happens. So sad. Well, anyway, how about the sun in Gemini sextile Mars? It's all happening at the same time. You know, I mean, this is a very, very minor transit. But suffice it to say, I am thinking about the implications of all these things together. So, yes, there was a heat wave last year. I think it was August 25th. Oh, wait, no, this was 2009. This was the last time we had the closest I could find to a Mars, Sun, Pluto aspect like this where the sun was trying Pluto and Mars was opposite. And there was sort of a, you know, a loose sextile between the two. So this was August 26th of 2009, okay? Terrible heat wave and wildfires. The day before this perfected, August 25th, the Morris fire begins in the Angeles National Forest in Southern California. It was possible arson, most likely arson. And this set off a whole cascade of wildfires in 2009 in Southern California. Really terrible event. The other thing that comes up from this a lot is death from illness. Ted Kennedy died of a brain tumor on that same day, the 25th of August. And just a few days later, DJ AM, um, also known as Adam Goldstein, from the band Crazy Town, he died of a drug overdose at age 36 on August 28th, terribly sad. Well, again, what does all this mean for you? Again, please, please, please look at the house placement of Mars here and that will give you a big indication about where to watch for conflict in your life. But suffice it to say, the tendency for conflict will be very high. Pluto will be pushing Mars into a corner. Mars does not like to be pushed into a corner. The sun will be sort of egging Mars on too. They're both hot and dry. When they get together, they amplify each other's tendency to explode a little bit, their heat, right? Their agitation. The dryness makes them go it alone. It makes them act out. So you'll want to watch your words. You'll want to watch relationships that could be adversely affected by your need to assert yourself. If you tend to be a little bit more, you know, meek and deferential, then your tendency to assert yourself may bring up conflicts with people who are like, why does she act that way? Or how is he doing that? See, um, that'll happen. And over time, as we be consistent and we start to grow into our confidence, then people will get used to it. And the people who don't and won't will fall away. But that doesn't mean don't stand up for yourself during this difficult transit. All it means is pick your battles, watch your words. And those relationships with people who are always going to bat with you or go always going to bat for you and always trying to take care of you, look out for those people. They're the ones you don't want to say things to that will alienate them or wound your relationships because those are the people that matter later on. Well, so how about the Taurus-Jupiter stuff, right? Because Jupiter and Taurus is going to be square Mars during this, and that will perfect on May 23rd, right? Jupiter blows things up, makes them bigger. You know, Jupiter can be pompous, zealous, and fanatical, but it can also be a very good influence. You know, he's wise and benevolent, and he can also be merciful and 
moral. He could be the moral police even sometimes. In fact, Jupiter um, square Mars can be a little bit of the moral police. So watch out for people trying to impose their beliefs on you. And Mars doesn't take kindly to that, of course. So now Mars square Jupiter can also very literally mean explosions. There was that very famous 2020 Beirut, Lebanon explosion on August 4th. That happened when Mars was exactly square Jupiter. Very interesting thing. If you go back and look at some of these transits, you can see similar events. Also fires and things like that. So when all these things sort of convene and coalesce together in the sky, we can see a lot of similar events. You know, we may see abuse scandals be eliminated. We may see abortion rights and abortion laws, you know, be, and they're already being challenged, challenged. And it's already an incendiary issue. But we can see particular things sort of come up from this and hopefully no violent events. But that is a common occurrence with these transits. So keep your eye out. Watch your back. Now, for you in particular, you want to watch your temper tantrums and you want to watch your hot headedness. Of course, watch your environment around you. You know, if there are natural events, you need to be able to respond. So now then at the end of the month, May 28th, our Gemini sun will square Saturn and Pisces. So let's go here. Let's go here. Where did my thing go? Where did my thing go? There we go. See, I should edit shit like this out, but I'm not going to because I hate editing. And this is like a stream that I'm recording. At least I'm saying that in my head. Anyway, so you see the sun here has now um, perfected the square to Saturn. Of course, we know the sun is authority. We also know that Saturn challenges authority or tries to impose his own authority in opposition to the sun. He causes obstacles for the sun's agenda and he slows it down. He also restricts freedom and challenges, right? Challenges authority. So what sort of things have we seen with this transit? Last time was November 10th of last year. The Taliban banned women in Afghanistan from using public parks. Pretty wild. I mean, that's, you know, a restriction on freedom. Oh, this is a fun one. There was supposed to be a red wave during the midterm elections last year in the United States. There was no red wave. Saturn slowed that shit down. Hardcore. You know, um, the Democrats maintained control of the Senate, which wasn't expected. The Republicans got a slight control of the House, which is causing us a lot of problems now. And it was very much sort of a, a challenge to authority in a way, because this whole thing that we thought was going to happen, um, this authoritarian red wave, was was squelched or at least mitigated quite a bit. It wasn't as heavy, right? They lost a lot of elections. But we also did see restrictions to freedom. We did see restrictions to freedom because they came into the house, didn't they, and started imposing all sorts of wacky laws, you know? And the Republican state legislatures that uh, did gain control also started restricting freedoms for those of us who just want to live. So all these things together, they do sort of spell, um, <clears throat> they do sort of spell out an interesting recipe for, for uh, inflammatory conditions over the next week. I think we will see some adverse weather conditions, probably some excessive heat. I think we will see some political conflicts maybe even some <clears throat> some violent ones having to do with imposing authority or trying to maintain control. So, but for you in particular, like I say, just watch your mouth, pick your battles, and try to love one another as much as you can because life sucks. We all know. But anyway, thank you so much. Like the video and subscribe to my channel. Check out the description below 
for all my information. I do wonderful readings. You can email me. And also, please consider giving to my Patreon because, you know, it takes a lot of time and energy to make all this wonderful content. And I know you like it and I know it's helpful. So please. Oh, gosh, I'm so tired. But follow me on social media. Tell me happy birthday in just a few days. And have a wonderful whatever you're having. And transmission.